Hello, today is Monday, October 27, 2014. This is the data visualization class at San Francisco State University. Today, Andrew Steinmetz from the class will give us a few tips on how to use the terminal to do quick searches um, in very large files, specifically using the command grab. He will also show us how he did a map. Okay, so um, right here I have what is a um, GPS track, and it contains a. It's basically an XML file that contains a lot of information, because the GPS unit essentially pings the satellite every few seconds to keep track of where it is. So if you look at the file itself, it literally just goes on like this forever with. Um, basically an XML tag saying this is the latitude, this is the longitude, and then there's other kinds of data that's recorded as well, elevation and things like that. Depends on the way that the track is set up. So, um, in order to go through and actually copy all of this stuff out would be a nightmare. So you, you wouldn't really want to try and do it. You can't even do a very good find replace to get rid of a lot of the stuff. So the fastest thing to do is to, oh here, that's not working is to go to your terminal. Oh, it's in the middle. Oh, is it? Yeah, right oh, there yeah. it is. Look at that. It's to go to your terminal. And this is... So the terminal is basically your command line interface, and it is built into every Macintosh since OS X, because OS X is based on Linux. It's like their own flavor of Linux that they're running. And this is the way that you basically do things by um, and totally bypass the OS itself, the, the UI, the user interface that people associate with the operating system for Mac OS. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is if you look, I copied a unique identifier. And that's kind of the point of XML. It's like each tag is, stands for a specific piece of data. So if I copy just latitude degrees and then I navigate to my um, file on the desktop. I'll actually show you how, how this works really quick. So ls is list, what's in the directory. So there you see that it's showing my root, I'm in the hard drive root directory. Can I just zoom in a little bit? Sure. If you want to use this too. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's going to, on the video, it's going to be really right. crappy. Do you know how to get out again? You just press minus. Okay. So this too. Okay. Yeah. And option minus. Okay, so, um, what I did is I typed in ls, and ls is just basically list what's in the directory. And then you can see that this is the same list of directories that would be at the root of my hard drive if I just double clicked on the hard drive. And so then I want to see what's in my um, desktop, which is listed there. So you just go ls, and just like in R, you can type just the top, the first couple letters, and it is case sensitive, and it will type the rest. So now it lists everything that's on my desktop. And you see, um, there's an item, I don't know, maybe seventh from the bottom that says Liz, and that's my Liz folder. So then I can just add Liz, and now I can see what's in there. And you see that I have sample track and originals. Now this file that we're looking at right now, right here, this is in the sample track folder, and it's titled 14528338.txx. So then what you want to do is to find just that latitude degrees, and print that out, um, you could just go grep, which is ancient and secret Unix speak for find. <laughs> and basically, I mean, there is a find command, but this finds and prints. And it's actually much more powerful than that, which I won't go into. But so you would go grep, um, and then desktop, and then Liz, and then. Oh, this thing right yeah, here, so right, and then Liz, and then sample track, and then um, since I know that the file is one four five, I can just type one and tab, and then hit go, and it's not doing it. Look at that total failed example. Um, why is it not doing it? No, the path is right because it pulled it all up. I didn't even type any of that. Oh, I know it's wrong. <laughs> User error. The error is actually between the keyboard and the chair. So let's do that again. Um, 
So if you ever get something like that where it just it doesn't return anything, you just hit Control C and it'll break the operation that it's doing. So the reason why that didn't work is because I didn't include the thing that I'm looking for, which is latitude degrees. And now it was set for vector slash effect of the space because the file name is correct. Space. That's called escaping a special character, okay. and you do that. Uh, for things like spaces or dollar signs or whatever, things that are um, command line code. So then we go back, find my file again, and then boom. Immediately, it lists all of every single thing that is latitude degrees. And so I can literally just go, and this is the beauty about terminal on the Mac interface. I can just literally go and copy this. Normally I would have to print it to a file, which is kind of a special thing to do. But now I can just copy and go into yeah, go into here, create just a new page, paste it, and then I can select any one of these and just do a regular old find and replace. Oops. Why didn't it do all? Select all sorry Deselect, selected text only. Oh, I see how you are in your specialness. And then it gets rid of all that, and then you just throw in another slash right there. Boom. So you've just cleaned it all up just like that. And so that from here, you can take this and drop it into an Excel file and do the same thing for the longitude. And now you've taken um, approximately 5,000 lines <laughs> and dealt with it in two minutes. So that's the fast way to do that. And then there was one other thing. Oh, so there was another thing I want to show you really quick. Um, so if you look at, uh, like, let's say, this file. So this is just literally a page of already common delimited information. And so, but I have, like, for the real thing for Liz, I have, like, 37 of these. And so you wouldn't want to copy paste all these as well. So there's a simple way to get around this as well using the terminal. So then what you would do is um, you go cat. And what cat means is it's concatenate. So you're appending something to the end of the next file. Or you're taking one file one and adding something to the end of it. Then you just go down the whole line. So then you would go cat um, desktop. Let me zoom in on that. Desktop. And then it's uh, Liz. And then it's Originals. And um, to select every file, the easy thing to do is go star. And asterisk means every file that fits this kind of descriptor. And so it's everything that ends in .csv. And then you add a caret like that. And what you're saying is take all of those and put it into one file. So, which is going to be desktop all.csv. And boom, it's done. You saw how fast that was. It's, it's so fast because there's no, um, it doesn't have to draw anything. So you see, it went through and it added all those subfiles into one file, which then makes it easy for you to just go through and delete this. I mean, you just do another find replace, and then you're done with that. So those are my two quick Unix tips that aren't too terribly confusing. <laughs> and um, so the, the last thing that you wanted me to show you was the file, open file, and then desktop, and then Liz run marathon map. And then you have to have the map package turned on which you don't have installed, so... You can just describe what you can do. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing from here is uh, I've been installing the maps package, and once that's installed, I can go and import my data, which is not here anymore. It is now at the desktop. Uh, 
All right. So then let's try it again. Um, well, normally you would load your file. Let me see. And then it's, I'm saving it into this variable, marathon 2013. And then I would run it. Um, then I run the plot of the maps by loading map, database, county, and California. So you have uh, select choices of what is it? Um, the country with no states, the country with states, uh, the country with states and counties. And that's what I would be loading here, except I would be running just California. So you'd end up getting a little. Actually, I think I'd probably just do that. Yeah, so that's what you end up getting, right? Um, and then after that, you would have to run lines to draw the, to plot the line from the GPS coordinates. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Let me try this. Oh, you know what? It's because you're, um, I know why. Let's try that. Oh, right. There you go. So I just loaded the file. And that's what it looks like. That's the one that I cleaned up previously. And so now if I run the next one, you still get that map. And then you run the lines. And you can't see it. But the lines are actually there. So um, actually, let me export this. Save as PS. Yeah, so all those latitudes and longitudes are in San Francisco, right? Right. So they're obviously going to be all there. So then um, I ended up plotting it. It's just that you can't see it because it's so tiny. So then if you go into Illustrator and zoom way in, so you can see there's the plot. But then if I go back out and start deleting all the unnecessary counties, oops, undo. I've got to release that first. Then go through and delete all the unnecessary counties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're whittling it down just to San Francisco County. The only county that really counts in California. And then we can take uh, this and zoom it way up. And there's my track. So then, as I was mentioning earlier, the track ends up coming out kind of stepped, but you can smooth that out. There's a line smooth uh, function somewhere in here. I think I'm under object. But uh, there you go. That's how you can plot GPS data. So in other words, it's a little bit of a hack, but only because we can't have a map within our of San Francisco, right? Yeah. For you know, more complicated stuff, it might not work because you want to have your data, GPS, or whatever, longitude, latitude, really linked to your whatever. Yeah, that, that was here, one. That was you one. Know where it starts, you yeah. just have to scale it. Right? Yeah, that was one thing. I did have to tweak it slightly because the maps that people draw themselves of San Francisco, no matter, no matter how good they are, they're not GPS precise. And so um, I did have to kind of disproportionately scale it, but it wasn't bad. The projection is probably the same, right? I mean, they're usually they're all the same projection anyway. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the, yeah. The it's pretty close. I mean, it's pretty darn close. Huh? So, and then to smooth out my line, I just went under object and then path simplify. And you can adjust how smooth you want to make it. So, or complicated. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>